Hello, so you've probably seen the news recently that our eternal leader, Michael Gove, is taking the action of banning works of American literature from the British English Literature GCSE. Which, well, the Department of Education say that this isn't banning, it's merely scrapping from the syllabus. But to scrap from the syllabus means that teachers have no reason to teach something, and it will not be taught, therefore is not in it, and another word for doing that is banning. So, hmm, never mind. Um, so this means that words that I saw, I read as a child, such as, uh, let's see, The Great Gatsby, the fantastic Great Gatsby, and The Great Gatsby is something that really sort of, um, I didn't study it in GCC, I studied it as an A-level, but it was fantastic, it was inspiring, and it really, like, ridiculously so made me passionate about English literature. Um, also, Of Mice and Men, all about ketchup, as you know, or The Rabbit, The Rabbit, George, and which I thought was a fantastic book, and art, oh, brilliant, and film, of course. <laughs> but no, no, it's English literature. Um, Huckleberry Finn, that will also be a book that you can't read as a GCC. Um, and Art Catcher of the Rye, which is the first young adult novel and inspired something that you may know, um, Perks Being Wallflower. And of course, John Green. Um, yes, you can't read Catcher in the Rye, which, as a GCC, which is a fantastic book about teenage angst, and you'll probably hate. Um, oh, I've forgotten the name, uh, the main character of Catcher in the Rye, and it's fantastic, and it's great. But you'll see lots of similarities between him and yourself, if you're like me, or maybe that's just me, which is worrying. Anyway, but I do agree with Mr. Gove that there is fantastic British literature that is not being used in the Ameri in the education system. The Curious, the curious Incident of the Dog changes perspectives, and it's... It's just a fantastic read. Really interesting. I, I didn't really know much about... Is it... Um, aut no, it's not autism. It's... Asperger's? Is it Asperger's he has? Um, never mind. I'm going to see the play of that soon, I hope. Is it for the whole roof came down thing? That wasn't very good. Um, Gove suggests that children should be reading books like Jane Eyre. And I've not read Jane Eyre, and... I've tried to read books like that, but personally, I don't think it's very effective at getting children into into reading. But works such as works of American literature are much better at getting you into reading, such as Gatsby. It's short, it's very readable, and it's just fluid. Um, but also there's British contemporary plays, such as Educating Rita, and don't know, perhaps Finn Kennedy's How to Disappear Completely and Never Be Found. But um, our education reason, educating reason is really good, actually. It's sort of about Open University when it was new and early, so there's a lot of context, I suppose. Um, but yes, um, I do agree with Michael Grove that such works of English literature should be used. However, I don't see why we should prescribe books because of their nationality. What does nationality, other than perhaps dialect, have anything to do with the standard of a book, and I don't think that nationalism has any place in the education system other than perhaps, I don't know, boosting the sales of a contemporary author. That's literally the only benefit it really has to anyone. And to prescribe the texts that someone reads, it's really bad, to be honest, for children. It makes children the victim of your bigotry against... It's Apparently it's just Michael Rowe's own personal feud against American literature, which is annoying. He hates Of Mice and Men. So what? It doesn't mean that all children shouldn't be able to read Of Mice and Men. It's very irritating. But yes, I do think that schools should be able to... well, there should be more wit breadth into what they can read, but not by nationality. Oh, but it should be readable. Short-ish. I don't know. I think shortness is sort of important for young readers and more important than anything fluid and fun to read and really good te nitty te like um the great gatsby would be a fantastic text um but also shakespeare it is in the syllabus and there are some fantastic works of shakespeare that i was into but like macbeth <laughs> kill the swine <laughs> sorry i probably look mad because i am <laughs> um 
like Macbeth, Midsummer Night's Dream, there are lots of Shakespearean plays that children will be into, but it's already in the syllabus, so I don't know why he's talking about that. But no, I disagree with things like Jane Eyre and Dorian Gray. I read Dorian Gray when I was younger, but I didn't get it very much. Maybe I would with a teacher's help, but I don't know. I think that what we've currently got is currently working quite well. Gove probably disagrees. But this isn't the only... sorry. This isn't the only prescriptivism we've been having from the Department of Education. Recently the Department of Education have been disagreeing with the English language and literature, or just English language, syllabus. They've been saying that texts such as Twitter, contemporary texts such as Twitter and Russell Brand have no place in the British education system. What? I was going to say poppycock, but that's weird. Um, what? Rubbish! Bullshit! Um, they're just really useful things, like, it would discredit the work of, where is he? Um, David Crystal. It would discredit the work of, like, the top linguists, such as David Crystal and his work Internet Linguistics, which personally inspired me to write my own English language report on the use of language on Twitter by businesses such as Waterloo Oxford Street, which received nearly full marks, which is fantastic. Um, but yes, I think that what utter rubbish from the exam, uh, from the Department of Education, and it just proves that they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what English language qualifications are really for. Ugh, it's really annoying me. Um, what's in the word of politics, since it's sort of politics -y? It's been the European election, if you didn't know, which, I don't know, maybe a lot of you did, because apparently 66% didn't vote. And where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Very high in enthusiasm today. Um, I was registering people to vote, um, so I've registered quite a few people to vote, but there's quite a lot left over. But yes, you should really vote in the 2015 election, because it really is so important, this 2015 election. As you can see, that UKIP have really become popular, and my own personal Liberal Democrats have become really unpopular. We lost Graham Watson, who's been our MEP for 20 years, and he's been fantastic. He's applied for Objective One funding, which is over £320 million, I think, something like that. Um, and it's in geography textbooks. That's how important people like Graham Watson are. But instead, um, as well as UKIP, the Green Party and the wonderful Molly Cato. There she is. She's an economist. She got in in the southwest. That's quite good. Hopefully, she might be really good and good for the area. And also, um, is it Claire Moody? Claire Moody got in. She's the Labour candidate, and I hope that she does well. I don't have that strong party allegiance myself, but as long as the right don't get in, I'm very not right wing. My grandfather was communist. I am quite the liberal. Ah. Anyway, that's enough from me. Vote. Oh, and also there's a petition online saying that we should keep American literature. Sign that, I'll put the link in the downy down. And there's also a petition saying that we should get rid of Gove, which surprisingly has proved very popular recently. What a horrible thing to target a public figure. Horrible. Sign it. Bye.